shack with Glendora, a show for living right. A chat with Glendora makes your day so bright. Words of inspiration, jokes to make you smile. Come relax and chat with Glendora for a while. Okay, we're here on Art Now and here with Glendora Folsom Buell from A Chat with Glendora. And uh, this, I believe, is uh, episode six, maybe, in our interviews. How are you doing today, Glendora? What did he say there? He said, how are you doing today, Glendora? Oh, very good. And this is our uh, 14,211th show, dear. <laughs> it's your 14,000th. I, I think I, I haven't even hit the 500 mark. I don't think I've hit the 200 mark, Glendora. So you're staggering uh, in your longevity. You look great. Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you, I feel wonderful. Right. And, and uh, Drew, do you know how old the oldest person in the world is? You know, I, th I think it's about 112 maybe. Uh, not bad, 116 there. Oh my God. W who is the oldest person in the world? And she lives in Spain. In Spain. So olive oil maybe. Some of that good Spanish olive oil. <laughs> Or, or some of that dulce pasta. I know there was always a thing that they said there was a group, a part of Russia, what used to be the old USSR, uh, the Georgia, uh, state of Georgia, where the people were living to be extraordinarily old too. So you might, you're doing pretty well yourself though, Glendora. What do you credit your longevity to? Uh, a public with great stamina. And your vegan lifestyle, I'm sure. There's no question about that, honey. And knowing the greatness and the goodness and the oneness and the beauty of God and living to help others instead of helping yourself. How's that? Yeah, no, uh, that's that's definitely uh, central to most of uh, uh, your thinking. Drew, I have something to tell you that happened since I last talked to you. Uh, you know, I had a children's TV show the SS Glendora in the year 1955 to 1962. That would be uh, 68 years ago. And almost every day, Drew Wilson, somebody will say that they saw me back on TV way back then. And my friend Wayne is a great promoter. Uh, he went to pick up his suit that he bought at the haberdasher yesterday. And he said to the people there, uh, when you were kids, did you watch the SS Gondora on TV? And everybody there said, yes, we did. And Wayne said, do you know I talk to her every day? And the people said, she's still alive? <laughs> were they mateys? Oh, yeah, right, right there. Yes, very good. They were mateys, and I was a skipper, honey. Right, uh, full steam ahead on the SS Gondora. All stations, man your posts, full speed ahead. That's great. Yeah, so they, they uh, had grown up in the Albany area or did they watch it in Boston? Because I know you were on, in a, on some different stations. Yes, but wouldn't it have been a great show for down in your area of Groton, Connecticut and, uh, and uh, New London TV? What a great show because you're right on the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, uh, it's, this coastal area here uh, is, has gotten really popular here in the last 10 years or so. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful area and uh, I, I'm, I'm appreciative. I've always lived by the water, as it turns out. Yeah, the real water. Yeah. The yeah, Atlantic Ocean, yeah. How have, you, how have you all been this winter up there uh, 
in uh, you know the Albany area uh, where you live, have you gotten a lot of snow? Well, we didn't get it so much in Albany. We got seven inches, but Pittsfield got 24, and the towns north of Pittsfield got 32. Yeah, because we got all those snowstorms uh, that hit north of here came as like monsoons down here on the shoreline. We had really, honestly, we had only a couple inches of snow all winter here in Connecticut, in yes, southern Connecticut. Gonna, yes, it has not been my idea of a winter by any means. So what else is on your mind, Glendora? Uh, my 1993 Lincoln. And my 1980 Lincoln Continental Mark VI, uh, it was a problem where they should go after Glenny goes to heaven. And so I couldn't find any solution to it, Drew. And so I called in the people and said, yes, you can crush them. They were going to give me $200 for each one. And the night before, I said, Glendora, that is a terrible thing to do, to crush all those electronics and three inches of carpeting and six inch and six speaker, uh, six speakers of sound. So in the morning, Drew, I called Hemmings Motor News up in Bennington, Vermont, and I took out an ad and I said, I would like a thousand dollars for both of my Lincolns only to a person who would restore them. Well, the ad was in there month after month after month after month. And then a man from Rochester said, I'll give you the $1,000. I'll put the check out the middle of February. And will you keep them in your garage until I can find housing up here in Rochester for them? I said, yes. And Drew, on uh, March the 20th, this past Monday of this week, he came, honey, and he took the 1993 Lincoln as the first one. Oh, that's great. So if they're going to stay on the road in some form. I, I, I think you got a great deal. Those, those cars are, you know, collectible but if they're well, well restored and in original condition. Some of those collectors love to restore those cars. So, I mean, those are some real battleships of the American roads. So I said, now you tell the 1993 Lincoln when you get it to Rochester that his brother, the 1980 Lincoln, it will be there soon after because they've never been apart from each other. <laughs> well, cars have a soul, I think. Yeah. And he's such a joy. You don't know how he loves those Lincolns. Yeah. No, the, the hobbyists or the car collectors that are like, that love those big old, uh, you know, land yachts, some people call them. Um, yeah, they're, they appreciate it. That's, that's and great. Drew, do you, and Drew, do you know they still make those engines? One is a 351 Windsor. Right. And the other one is a 420 something. And they still make those engines. Right. And, they, and they're, collect, they're collectible, collectible because the provenance that you owned them too. But listen to this, Drew. And maybe Amy will tell you. Amy, what happened? What was the misfortune that happened to those Lincolns, honey? Somebody went into the garage one day when it was unlocked and they stole both the catalytic converters off the car. Oh God. Yep. That's, that's a thing these days. Is it happening down around uh, your area, dear? Yeah, because I know for one thing, they have some real precious metal uh, is, is part, of the, uh, part of the makeup of them. There's there's some pr real precious metal in the catalytic converter converter and they can they can just extract the precious metal and that that alone is is valuable. Yeah, that that's a thing. That's a national thing with people jacking the catalytic converters out of cars, particularly those old ones. It's platinum. That's what it is. It's platinum. That, yeah, the platinum. Okay, yeah. There's platinum in those catalytic converters and platinum is more valuable than gold now. Oh yeah well okay i guess we exhausted that subject what's next dear oh you want some jokes honey uh harry was talking to god and he said god how much is a million dollars to you and god said ten dollars and harry says god how long is a million years to you and god said one second and harry says god can i have ten dollars and god said certainly just a second 
Yeah, you got to wait on that one a little bit, huh? And have you heard about the uh, Czechoslovakian trampoline team? Okay, yeah. They call themselves the Bouncing Chicks. <laughs> yeah, that one I talked when we was talking to you on the phone uh, the other day to, to line up the interview. Uh, I remember you dropped that one on me. I really like that. That's good. Good. A lot of people bouncing checks these days. Some big checks too. <laughs> yeah, the bank tells me it's more than ever. Uh, yeah. Amy has a joke for you. Uh, ask him what does a frog? What happens when a frog parks illegally? What well, parks illegally? Oh, he gets what's, towed. It gets towed. Oh, <laughs> but I'm bump. I need a rim shot sound effect. <laughs> he gets towed. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you want to tell them about the one with the pie? Yes, a little girl in school, she came home and she's very confused. And she said, the teacher says that pie are square. Pie are not square. Pie are round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that, you know, I, I was pretty good in math at one time, but, uh, you know, pie are square. I can go, I think it's 3.14 something. That, that's a good one there, Gondora. A rope, R-O-P-E, is walking down the street and he goes into a restaurant and he starts ordering and the head waiter says, wait a minute, aren't you a rope? And the rope got very angry because the head waiter said, you have to leave out on the sidewalk the rope tied himself into a knot and he tossed both of his ends and he went back into the restaurant and he started to order and the head waiter said, wait a minute, aren't you a rope? And he said, I'm afraid not. <laughs> oh, no. Now, Amy, has, Amy has one to tell you about a Dalmatian dog. Okay. Why do firefighters have a Dalmatian dog? Okay, why do they? So they can send the dog out to find the fire hydrant first. <laughs> <laughs> so the dog can go ahead and find the fire yeah, hydrant. Yeah, he, 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 he can sniff out the fire hydrant, okay. The young father said, young daddy said, how come the boy who was not good enough to marry your son is the daddy of the smartest grandson in the whole world. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right, figure it out. It's very funny when you figure it out, honey. <laughs> I, I'll I'm go sure. over it again. How come the boy okay. who's not good enough to marry your daughter is the daddy of the smartest grandson in the whole world? I don't know, I, I, that's a stumper. <laughs> how come well well that's the joke honey <laughs> she's saying the guy that wasn't good enough for the daughter of the father is this is the father of the smartest grandkid in the world <laughs> oh okay yeah the the, the oh, father the father the father loves the grandkid i get it okay. there you are yeah amy, amy good bundle please. of joy father uh, Fathered by the idiot. <laughs> this is a video joke. I hope, you, can you see my hands? Sure, yeah, perfect. All right. Harry had a bad day on the golf course and he threw his golf balls into the pond and he threw his golf clubs into the pond and he threw his golf bag into the pond and he went up to the clubhouse and he slit his wrists and he's standing there bleeding to death. And his friend Bob comes in and says, hi, Harry, how about a game of golf tomorrow? And Harry says, what time? <laughs> oh, no. Too funny. Yeah, that's, that's what, Hey, so uh, you mentioned Bob. Listen to this one, uh, Glendora. I got a story for you. So I was on the phone with you uh, the other day, and uh, we were talking to do you know to line up the interview and i was watching on television so just a little backstory i thought uh, so on, Ch on channel 25 here 
on the public access uh, channel, we have what's called the classic arts showcase. It's sort of, that's the default channel. When we don't have our local program, we're showing all these classic art stuff. So I, I'm talking to you on the phone. I hang up the phone and literally look up and who's on the, who's on the classic art showcase, you think? Who? Bob Hope. <laughs> and literally seconds after I finished talking to you, Glendora, on the phone, I look up on yeah. the television and there's Bob Hope introducing yeah. Frank Sinatra. Yeah, uh, yes, that is a thrill. Good for you. Isn't that? So people call that synchronicity. Yes. It's those like yes. coincidences that are like beyond the realm of just happen chance. What do you think about yes. that subject? Yes, that's right. It's very enticing there. It, I mean, it, that happens. Do you have, you have a, you, I'm sure you've had the occasion of that sort of thing happening in your life. Yeah, it's really something. Well, those sort of like coincidences or chance meetings, like you, you, you're thinking of somebody and then all of a sudden you get a phone call out of the blue from them. Yes. Yep. 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 Yeah, that, that was funny though that, you know, and I, I know your connection to Bob Hope and like, I get off the phone and of all the things to be on the television, there's Bob Hope introducing That's right. Frank Sinatra. That's right. Yeah. That's the power of television too. Like, the, you know, these, a lot of this great stuff can live on. All the, a lot of the great entertainment still lives, lives on. Now, Andrew Wilson, what is the uh, future of public access TV? Well, we have, we've had this discussion before and it's, we're, I mean, we're always fighting for relevancy, but then again, I say to people like everybody, but Netflix is kind of fighting for relevancy because broadcast television has lost market share. So I say to people, you know, public access is fighting for relevancy, but so is broadcast television and it's, it's a fight. There's so much television now, it's everybody's fighting for a bigger, a small, a bigger piece of the pie and the pies in hunt thousands of different, you know, slices. How, I mean, are your, what are you hearing from the, your public access or community access channels that your, your show's on? Well, uh, it is not bleak. Uh, we got a call from the Boston area. A young man had lost both his daddy and his mother, and he wanted to know if we could console him. And so we sent him a book called uh, Science and Health with Key to the Scripture by Mary Baker Eddy. And then the next week from that same program, that would be the Long Island LT's programs, honey, in Long Island. They're very powerful. And uh, this uh, woman said, you, uh, you solved all my problems. And I said, well, why? And she said, you said it. And well, what did I say? You said, God is love. Right. Three words. And she was ready to talk to me for two hours. Oh, that's great, Glendora. That's so great. it's not as bleak as you think. Right. Well, that's great that you're getting feedback because that's one of the things that, you know, we all, you know, sort of struggle with is, 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 you know, the recognition and the feedback that people are out there and they're listening. I talked to somebody just last night and uh, they were telling me, I told them I was a, you know, community access coordinator here in Waterford. And they told me, oh, I watched the show, uh, Murray Renshaw's show, uh, the Renshaw Report. I watch that every week. And, you know, every once in a while. Oh, you well, know, that's good. You got feedback. Right, right. And a lot um, of the producers here are, are the same way. They they get frustrated because they maybe don't get a phone call for a while and they, they haven't heard any feedback. But people, yeah, people yeah, are sure out right. there watching it. I ha yes, I'd like to share with you and your audience uh, that Patrick Galino, who worked for Cablevision, uh, was out on a cruise in the Atlantic and they were all sitting, all the passengers were three, four of them were sitting around the table asking each other what they did. And they asked Patrick and he says, well, I work for Cablevision. And they said, well, what do you do for Cablevision? And he said, public access. And another woman says, public access, what's that? And another woman says, it's that woman with a hat and gloves. <laughs> 
And this is way out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean there. Yeah, that's great. It's that's 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 Glendora. You're the yeah. poster child. You you're at, at your at your age, you're still the poster child, Glendora. <laughs> that's my attempt at a joke, Glendora. Yeah, it was good. Good. Yeah, of me. I mean, it, it took you a long time to become a to become a poster child. Keep it up, honey. I love to hear the people laugh. Yeah, definitely. We definitely need some laughter for, uh, here for sure. How's everything else treating you, Glendora? Uh, oh, everything's or... perfect. Everything's a hundred percent. You just have to take time to stop thinking wrong and realizing the goodness of God, the allness of God, the wholeness of God, and just realize that you're not going to make it through selfishness, egotism made for us. You're just not going to make it that way. The only way you make it is by helping others. Right. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, there, there's that karmic thing about life that, uh, you know, that by helping others, you help yourself infinitely more than you can ever help anyone well, forget else. about helping yourself just right. say for helping others never right. mind yourself i get sick of people talking about themselves yeah no and, and we're in that we live in that society where it's a lot of i me me my you know uh with uh social media i try to stay away from that to the extent uh that i can that uh so much is is, is you know look oh, look at me and all that stuff and also stop and think what you're doing to the animals when you take away their lives and when you club them and when you make them prod in the rectum with an electric prod and the things that they go through. And then just stop and think of all the toxins you're eating. Listen, no one, all the people all along in my life, stop eating animals, you know, think of what you're doing to them and think what it's doing to your health. And you know, all those people are dead now, Drew? They're all dead, and I'm up here all alone. Yeah, yeah. There, that, that, there, there's a lot to be said for the vegan lifestyle. I need to remind myself to, you know, live a vegan, vegan life myself. I'm trying to get back in a little better shape uh, with the, the changing of the seasons and all. I gotta lose some weight, and that's a, probably a good idea for me too. Take a look at one of those films, if you dare, to show you how they treat those animals. Yeah, we we run a show called In Defense of Animals, and it's pretty graphic. And uh, yeah, that's a show that's been on the cable channel here uh, for years. Good, good. One of the reasons I've been uh, a little tough uh, to get back to, we've been having a, some upgrade of the equipment here and learning some new technology. So things are going pretty well here. Uh, and I'll say hi to Reggie for you. I'll I'll see him next Tuesday. I'm glad for you. Hey, Glendora, thank you so much for doing this interview. And uh, I make sure, uh, you know, we get back in touch and do another interview before any more time uh, lapses, okay? Yes, and thank you for doing it for the public, dear. Yeah, it's great. I've, I've been watching, the, I've been playing the, pr the prior episodes uh, of, you know, our interviews, and I watch them, and they really, uh, they they really hold up, hold up over time, and uh, I, I appreciate all the positive energy and their, your commitment yeah. to uh, you know your causes that uh, you've championed, and uh, your longevity is uh, proof positive. You're on the right track, uh, Glendora. Thanks so much. Well, you deserve credit, honey, for trying to keep it going. Thank you. And Amy's here. Say goodbye to Amy. Thanks again, Amy. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. Bye, bye, sweetheart. And Glendora, Grace you're looking great there. I love the uh, the outfit. <laughs> Grace and peace under you and all you love, dear. Bye, bye. And, and right back at you, Glendora. And uh, may uh, you receive all the blessings you so much deserve. Thank you so much for everything, Glendora. Peace. Peace out. <laughs> love you, Glendora. Love you too, dear.
uh, Steve and Terry. Steve and Terry, thank you for your birthday card. Tomorrow's Gundor's birthday, May 1st, 95 years old. Next year, Lisa McGee. Lisa McGee, thank you for coming to see Gundora on Thursday night. This is a big, big, big week in your life. Your son is getting married in California. I'm so happy for you. Go. Birthday. Birthday. We covered that all right. 38th Street. What, dear? 38th Street. Oh! Manhattan Neighborhood Network, which is public access in the borough of Manhattan, uh, had its studio on 59th Street. It was the old Phoenix movie studio. And they, they bought that property, oh, about 20 years ago. And guess what? They sold it. And guess what is there now? One of these high-rise rich people building. Think of what they got for that. Think of what they got in there. A square foot in Manhattan goes for real estate goes for about a million dollars. Think of what they got for it. So they took the money and they rented a floor. That's the way they do in Manhattan. They don't rent the whole building. They rent a floor down on 38th Street. And they say that the public access is a Taj Mahal. That it is elegant. What good news for our people? Public access. Next, Amy. Um, that's all that's written on the paper. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. And how many total minutes do we have? Um, I say about twenty-four. Phil, now what were you going to tell your friends? Oh, I was going to say when people stop by tomorrow. Why don't we have them say hi on camera, and that can fill up the rest of your 30 minutes, or 28 minutes. Oh, uh, okay. I just would rather start a new one. Is that okay with you? Okay, sure. Okay. Anything else, Phil? That's all, I think. Anything else, Amy? Not unless you want to do more jokes or... No. Words. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. More jokes. Enough about King Charles. And how many minutes are left here? Um, we're at 25 minutes, so we got three minutes left. Hey, Google, stop. Hey, Google, time, timer, please, two minutes. Okay, two minutes, what starting a, now. What a, what a good Google. All right, let me think of a good hymn for you. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of beauty, God of grace. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, open to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. That was by Beethoven, and he never heard it, because he went deaf. And it was the program at the Troy Music Hall last week. And the people were thrilled with it. They were standing in their chairs and applauding and praising Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. All right, a prayer. Be ye blameless and harmless. <laughs> Don't eat animals. Be ye blameless and harmless as a child of God without rebuke. Wouldn't we love to be that? Phil, yeah. you have the next to the last word, and Amy can have the last word. Onomatopoeia. He said onomatopoeia. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, you can have the last word. Grace and peace. Oh, that's lovely. Now I'm going to see if the little uh -huh. wonder works. <laughs>